All right. I'd like to go ahead and call this meeting to order. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone in attendance today. Hope everyone had a, a good Thanksgiving and had a little time to rest and eat a lot of desserts, as I did, <laughs> along with some pizza. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we begin, I'd like to um, uh, ask Sergeant Major Hull. Sergeant Major, would you like to stand and uh, introduce... This is our new executive director for the Museum of the Marine, Ms. Ashley Donaldson. Daniel. Danielson. Oh my God. Three, three times. Some days she's going to beat me. No. I should have done it. And he won't myself. let go of me. I don't know why. I don't want to run out of time. You'll find out. <laughs> but welcome aboard. Thank you for being here. And we also have, please stand and introduce yourself. That's for a later presentation? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, well, we'll get that in just a moment. First order of business is uh, the adoption of the agenda that you have before you. If you don't have any changes or any problems with it, we'll need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Next, you have the approval of the minutes. I approve to move the minutes. I second. Mm -hmm. yeah, the motion is second. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to the strategic work. Uh, first, uh, we have some... Um, Reports. The first one is going to be Oktoberfest. It's going to be a flash report. We have a representative, Theo, with us. Theo, are you with us? Where are you at? I am here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, to give us a report on Oktoberfest. Mr. Okay. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, and members of the authority, thank you for inviting Oslo Community Outreach to be with you today. On behalf of the outreach, I want to thank you also for your investment. Uh, your investment has been significant and been a major resource for the growth of Onslow Oktoberfest. I uh, just want to share with you a, an overview of Oktoberfest 2016, as well as talk to you about some lodging and restaurant uh, partnerships, some promotional activities, and plans for growth for, for Oktoberfest. First, uh, Oktoberfest is a three-day activity. We've cemented uh, that activity, I think, when the authorities started investing in Oktoberfest, it was one day uh, in the last several years uh, through your encourage, encouragement uh, and support, we have grown the festival to three days. Uh, Thursday, there was a Thursday night uh, activity, a kickoff activity at the Ale House restaurant. On Friday, we had uh, a glow run, uh, a, a concert by Chris Klein, a Nashville recording artist who has ties to southeastern North Carolina. We had our beer, beer garden and food court operating. It was a wonderful Friday evening, and we had a slight shower uh, that temporarily interrupted the proceedings, but it was a wonderful audience, uh, wonderful uh, ambiance and atmosphere downtown Jacksonville on a Friday evening. We had an all-day festival on Saturday in Riverwalk Park, and I will share with you that one of the many com positive uh, comments that we received about the festival has been about that wonderful lovely facility uh, that in which the uh, festival is held. Uh, overall, our attendance was about 12,000. Uh, we had 180 vendor spaces and activities, and our economic impact estimate was $285,000. Regarding lodging and restaurant partnerships, uh, again, as I mentioned to you, the event was held at the Ale House restaurant. We estimated 25 hotel rooms based on survey responses. Uh, our hotel partners were Fairfield End and Baymont. Our uh, survey respondents also uh, <coughs> specifically mentioned staying at uh, Stay, Stay Bridge Suites, Holiday Inn Express, Baymont Inn, and Main Stay Suites. 26 percent of our vendors were outside of Onslow County, and that's raw data. Uh, based on the registration uh, data of our uh, vendors. 21% of our overall survey respondents reported their address was outside of Onslow County. So we are continuing uh, a trend in attracting uh, people to, uh, to downtown Jacksonville and, uh, and uh, um, Onslow County that uh, have business activities outside of our community. Um, we estimate that 15% or 18 
hundred were tourist patrons, people that came to us on that day who purchased gas, hotel rooms, goods, and services in our community on, uh, during Oktoberfest. One of the things that we uh, are looking forward to next year is using meeting, meeting max. Uh, as we started planning for 2016 Oktoberfest, I think uh, that we were in the uh, beginnings of implementing media, meeting max. Mm -hmm. And so uh, next year, we uh, that's one of our checklists, and I think that will help us to be more specific uh, in uh, tabulating and tracking the hotel stays. Theo, you feel pretty confident on the numbers you presented? Yes, yes. Many of these are raw uh, data responses that came to us through our survey and also outreach to our vendors. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> I, we thank the city for uh, suggesting a uh, collaboration with Viremark Advertising, um, and we um, are very pleased with the relationship that we've established with Viremark Advertising under the leadership of Teresa Beecham. Her enthusiasm and her uh, contacts in the local media market have been very value-added uh, to Oslo Oktoberfest, uh, especially the establishment of partnerships with uh, WCTI-TV and Jacksonville Daily News. Um, and uh, to the extent that uh, some of the other regional television stations have approached us and said, we want to be a part of that also. So uh, we, we thank uh, Viremark for, uh, for that type of uh, professionalism and, and working with uh, the media that is attracting the attention of others. Uh, I point out that there was extensive coverage of Oktoberfest being held in downtown Jacksonville by WITN, uh, WNCT, uh, Time Warner, 14 news coverage, coverage from aboard Camp Lejeune and the Globe. Um, we also were able to reach out into the private sector and collaborate with Jones Onslow, who helped us significantly uh, with printing materials for the festival. And uh, also under the encouragement of uh, Viremark Advertising and others, we continue to grow and strengthen our social media uh, campaign for, uh, for Oslo Oktoberfest. So we believe that we had a vibrant uh, promotional campaign this year. It was successful um, and many very favorable comments on the quality of the radio and television ads for the festival. Our plans for growth. Uh, we, we've done some things right. Uh, the festival is uh, a very sound activity, but there is there, there's room for growth, and we want to continue uh, to get better uh, and to grow the festival so that it is even a greater asset to tourism in Oslo County. One of our uh, suggestions that we are considering is certainly spotlighting 2017 as the 10th anniversary. Uh, we, we think that's a wonderful um, hallmark for this uh, for the festival, and that's an uh, anniversary that we can build on to attract attention. We're also considering a, a part of that a 10th anniversary concert, um, and the uh, uh, city of Jacksonville is embarking on building a wonderful amphitheater in the community, and the, the steering committee is brainstorming uh, and hoping to have a partnership uh, with the city and tourism on bringing a group um, uh, to the amphitheater for a concert for o Oktoberfest. And we believe it will be a group that has regional appeal uh, that would attract people to come to our community from Fayetteville, Kinston, Greenville, and spend uh, a Thursday night concert experience with us. A part of that is that we want to um, engage with our uh, and strengthen our partnerships with uh, hotels and restaurants so that we develop packages so that if you purchase a concert ticket perhaps there's a, a dinner package with a uh, with a restaurant or a lodging package um, and so we, we think by taking a more holistic view of the 10th anniversary and working with our restaurants and our hotels <coughs> That, that would be a, more of a, a, an attractive experience for someone coming over from a Fayetteville or Goldsboro or Greenville. Also, that uh, we're interested in creating a, a, a military beer product uh, and, uh, uh, and leverage the proximity to our military installations. And it could, should be a beer product that will recognize the great connection that this community has with our military community and installations. And, uh, we think that would be something that will that will be a wonderful connection, uh, and again, 
um, uh, be, I think, a, a model product that would help us to grow the festival. Also, that uh, we are, our glow run continues to, 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 uh, to grow, but on Friday night, uh, we have great support from Marine Federal uh, Credit Union for the glow run, but we're also looking at ways to increase the attendance of that. And one of the things that we're looking at is focusing on what we do. You know, the, the, the reason that we have these funds is to, the Oktoberfest, uh, was to create revenue for soup kitchen, homeless shelter, those sh basic needs charitable programs. And in doing that, we found, wow, this is a wonderful opportunity also to increase help with tourism in Oslo County. And so we want to use that foundation uh, to get the community involved in a, in a certainly more su substantive way in supporting the soup kitchen and the homeless shelter. And so we may have a, a, a Friday night glow run where it's titled, you know, Run, run for Shelter, uh, which would be a family-friendly uh, activity and uh, certainly someone may not have uh, the financial resources to make a large donation to our charitable programs, but they would like to come out with their family and walk or run that evening to participate. So we think that's a, a, a way in which we can continue to uh, grow the attendance and participation of the, of the, um, of the Glow Run. So uh, again, we appreciate the support and the investment that this organization has made in Oslo Oktoberfest. We thank you for the wonderful staff support and the partnerships that you have uh, encouraged in. Uh, we look forward to working with you uh, in, I think, especially uh, next year during the 10th anniversary. That's a wonderful opportunity for us to take a big leap forward in the festival. And I think the, uh, a, 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 a regional concert bringing individuals to Jacksonville is a way in which we really want to work uh, with uh, staff and with the authority uh, on that project. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was a great recap, and it sounds like you had a, a, a huge success, and, and it looks like your plans for growth are pretty sound. So great job. Great job. Any comments? No, I would echo that, too. I have a question where you have the Create a Military Bear product. Is that a new one, or are you looking at something that's already established and tying in with the military? We're looking at something that's established. Okay. Um, we've uh, have uh, you the, contacted the folks in Kinston? The strategic committee uh, uh, has given us some, some su suggestions that we are following up on, um, and uh, those through those connections, we're looking to have a product. Good. Yeah. Is it going to be sold, like bottled and sold, like you can buy a six-pack or you can buy a growler or something like that? And we'll, uh, we'll work through those details as it relates to what we're able to do under our a ABC permit also. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you very much. A yeah. Great job, and we look forward to next year. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, if you would allow me, uh, our honorary chairperson, Dana DeVusser, just arrived. Okay. And I certainly want to recognize her and her wonderful leadership uh, of, of Oslo Oktoberfest. Much of our growth has resulted from her steadfast exactly. leadership. Diana and I have worked together for years, and she's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Theo, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, and now um, I would like to ask Stacy Ross, please come forward. Um, Stacy is a representative of the Arabian Temple Number no. 42. He will give us a report on the charity ball. Yes, sir. Welcome. Good afternoon, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and all m members. Uh, my name is Stacey Ross, and I am the ball chairman for Arabian Temple Number no. 42, which is out of um, New Bern, North Carolina. I have with me today our uh, illustrious Ponte Omar Myers and our deputy of Oasis, Demetrius Raspberry. Welcome. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I want to say once again thank you to the authority for the grant, um, which we use to organize and help promote our annual charity ball. Um, the annual charity ball was held October 20th through the 23rd of this year. Our host hotel was the Hampton Inn. Um, the reason for this ball is uh, we celebrate our lustrous pote and we also give back to the community. Um, one of the ways that we give back to the community is we issue three $1,000 scholarships to the Jacksonville area, Kinston area, and New Bern area. Um, the makeup of the temple 
consists of those areas. So we have, give one deserving high school senior those uh, $1,000 scholarship from each area. And all the proceeds that come in from this, this ball weekend goes towards the continuing to push on, because of course we want to support our youth as they go forth in education. We, the weekend consisted of Thursday, which was a meet and greet, which was held at um, the Hampton Inn, which was the host hotel uh, in Jacksonville. We had about 200 members, guests that arrived this, this year. Um, this is the second year that authority has granted us money, and we'll continue to grow. Uh, the first year, we've already seen an increase about anywhere from 50 to 100 people on just that initial Thursday night. Um, the meet and greet, after the meet and greet, um, for the next Friday, we had a fish fry. A fish fry, we had over 400 people that were in attendance there. Um, the fish fry is a big event. Um, we uh, set up, our Kinston area is in charge of that. We set up fryers and we have all the food you can ask for out there. Everything from pig feed to everything on down the line, fish, everything. And that's a big draw. We had about 400 people. And that's continuing to grow. Um, during this year, uh, Mr. Theo, he mentioned that we had a rainstorm that came. And just as our fish fry was ending up, we had a <laughs> rainstorm that came through, thunder and lightning. Um, and believe it or not, people were still upset because we had to tear down. <laughs> the wind was blowing the tent away, but they, they wanted they <laughs> well, <not> fish. Not <laughs> <fish>. <laughs> yes, sir. We're right. helping a pig feet to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But we that event, it's growing. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, after that, after the fish fry, we tear down from the fish fry, and we have a disco theme that was held at American Legion. Uh, that theme, we had a Mardi Gras theme this year, not as you were, not Mardi Gras, masquerade theme this year. Um, another part of the weekend that's continued to grow, we had over 500 guests in the American Legion. And we're seeing the growth, um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but prior to this, we were at the old um, uh, Econo, Econo Lodge. That's where we were originally having this, and we had anywhere from like maybe 100 to 200 people that would come out on Friday night to this. And since we moved to the Hampton Inn, which I host, and we uh, got a contract with the American Legion because we were getting so many, we were getting so big, and now we're up to around 500 people for our Friday night disco. And one, and for the weekend, let me back up. A ticket for the weekend is $60. For $60, the guests get Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we tell them once they come here to Arabian Temple to Jacksonville, they put their pocketbook up because we're giving back to the community. And all these things that we're mentioning, they can attend these as long as they purchase the $60 tickets, they can attend all these events. You have food and beverages throughout the whole weekend. After that Friday night disco, uh, we have our normal hospitality, which is back at the hotel, and the guests are more than welcome to come back and continue to um, partake in food and drinks. On Saturday, we have our scholarship banquet. This is the banquet in which we present the three $1,000 scholarships to uh, the high school, the high school seniors. After Saturday, uh, the big, the big day Saturday evening is the ball, which we've um, still continued to grow. Uh, we've had a couple changes that we've implemented, and one of the things I want to thank Miss Teresa Beecham and her staff for the outstanding advertisement. This year, I mentioned later on in my report that we had more first-time visitors to the ball this year. And I know personally from people that reached out to me, it was because of the media push, the social media push. They, they were just so excited and so overwhelmed about the push, the advertisement push, with that including with the radio out, outstanding job. We, we got people from Virginia who knew about it. Um, me 
I had per two people from Ohio, never knew any, never been in Jacksonville, North Carolina before in their life. Didn't have no contacts here or nothing. But they reached out to me and they came here. And when they left, they were trying to already book rooms for next year. I said, hold on, hold on. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't set up the hotel yet. Um, the ball, outstanding. We had, actually had one of the photographers, Miss Teresa, mentioned she came out and photographed the Friday night and got some very good pictures of the activities and things that were going on. Um, after, after, after the ball was complete, um, the guests are more than welcome to come back to the host hotel again for more um, um, food and hospitality. In regards to the whole entire weekend, uh, we had three main hotels that we utilized. Those hotels were the Hampton Inn, where we had about 127 guests. Um, based on the Hampton Inn's report, we had a total revenue of $20,481.77. The next hotel was the Fairfield Inn, where we had about 39 guests under the Raven Temple. They generated a revenue of $4,751. We also utilized the stay bridge, which we had about 27 guests registered under. They took in $3,160.49. Um, we estimated out of all the guests that were here, we had about over 300 that were out of county visitors that came for, for the ball. And one of the things about our ball is we draw a lot of Onzo Countys to our ball. Um, I've already spoke about the great job that Mr. Reese and her crew did as far as marketing and, and potential for the next coming years. Um, based on the feedback, like I said, the Facebook and the radio advertisement, wonderful job. As far as planning and execution with everything, we had no problems whatsoever, no nothing. Anything we did have in regards to Ms. Teresa, she was, they, her staff was amazing with helping us and continue to push the, the advertisement. I can't say that enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Hampton Inn, they love us. They don't want us to go anywhere. <laughs> they, that staff over there are amazing. Nothing but compliments from the Hampton Inn. Um, same thing with the Fairfield Inn and the Stay Bridge. The Stay Bridge, they're kind of upset. They want to move to number two. Um, but they're absolutely amazing. Stay with no, no complaints, no nothing from any of the hotel. <coughs> Um, Arabian Temple, we do want to continue to advertise and reach many more people in the surrounding areas. Um, only other thing we have suggested as why it's coming out as far as the advertisement, we want to eventually be able to put together some type of short video slash commercial that pushes and explains more about the Thursday to Friday and the Saturday that will possibly let the local local community know what we are about because it's all about giving back to, to the community and we want to put something together like that that's the only thing we have that in regards to the money that the authority granted to us that we want to see because there's potential for growth and at the end of my report i did have an asterisk um, in regards to what happened with Hurricane Matthew and the surrounding areas, our Kinston area was hit very hard. We actually had some of our own nobles and daughters that lost houses and lost property and had damage during that area. And um, our Deputy Royce's, uh, Demetrius Raspberry, is actually from the Kinston area. And we estimate that we lost from 75 to 100 guests simply because of they were either still flooded or due to everything that happened. So in the future, as far as numbers, we predict, plus this year we stayed the same as far as numbers, but because we lost that many, we know we will get those people back.
I think. I think, Stacey, you mentioned to me, too, just for clarification, that those were people that were actually planning to come already yes, who yes. had to back out. So that's not a guess on, oh, gee, we would have done 100 more. Those were people that actually had to call and say, hey, can I you help me out? We're not going to be able to make it. So the numbers are real. Yes, sir. Thank you. Very good report. Yes, sir. Thank you. Very much. Any questions? Now, what, one of the things I wanted to comment on and send a report about incorporating some type of tour of the city. Since you have a captive audience, so to speak, I think you mentioned in your report that you wanted to partner with tourism to incorporate some sort of tour of the city of Jacksonville in Oslo County. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it's a great idea uh, to show off Jacksonville uh, in addition to your, uh, your video. And I think it's always great to show a video of fun times yes, sir. Uh, at the events. People will tend to draw closer because so they can identify with you. So I think those two <coughs> things are really, really good, and I hope that you incorporate, uh, especially the the tour of the city. Yes, sir. Uh, we got a lot of sites uh, here that would be of interest to uh, people. Yes, yes, sir. And on top of that, I think another thing that we actually discussed, we talked briefly about it. Just a, any kind of tour, like the down downtown. Um, the museum. Um, we also one of the nobles that one of the nobles that belong to us in the temple is also um, noble Houston Chanel, and he also mentioned possibly getting something where they could actually tour Montfort Point mm -hmm. and that incorporate in the museum. that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And we did inc include that in some of the Facebook pushes as well. Is um, we we did a pretty nice push for the Lejeune Gardens. Um, Royal Garden, so that people would know while you're here, you know, you've got a little downtime, be sure to check this out because that's certainly a, something moving that I think the people are interested in that are coming to town. And that's actually um, what we want to do for that Thursday, that meet and greet. We want to incorporate that day because we've got a lot more people coming in now on Thursday. If we can get a tour of the city, tour of the Beirut Memorial, Marfa Point, tour of downtown, anything that you know, spend money in Oslo County. Uh, if I might add, um, well, we, we actually did have a meeting about that, and what we're looking at is uh, flyers on beds. In other words, um, <coughs> we travel a lot as well, and when we get to a hotel, uh, they have the flyers. And we have talked about, talked to uh, the marina downtown about their little river cruise and things like that. And we, our intention moving forward is one to put those flyers together, showing exactly what Oslo County has to offer during that time, to include our Oktoberfest, which is as large as life. So we want to try to add that in on those flyers to show them that we have the Oktoberfest, we have the Beirut Memorial, we also have the cruises downtown as well that are, are, are raging to, 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 to join, join in with us. Because it is a big weekend when you have Oktoberfest going on, as well as our ball that we've been putting on for the past uh, 19 to 20 years here. Um, the numbers that we had this year were decent. They were very decent. Um, because of the storm, um, we're being a little modest with the numbers, but normally there would be about three or 400 more persons showing up. And that's where advertisement really came in and was really a boss for us because of the fact that all of our members outside of town, outside of the state, they couldn't make it because of the storm and things of that nature. Uh, the local area really showed out from that advertisement. And they basically saved us from the numbers that we would not have had. And all those first timers that was mentioned earlier came from that advertisement. So it was an outstanding thing for us. And we really appreciate everything that the city is doing for us right now, because we are moving forward. Those uh, people that were hit hard in Kinston and things of that nature. We also, on that Saturday, uh, our actual ball night, um, we also made the announcement there that we made a large donation to the Eastern uh, North Carolina Food Bank, Bank. Uh, North Carolina. of Eastern North Carolina because they said they have access to those areas that we couldn't get to to help. So we made a large donation to them as well. So when we pick up these funds and whatnot, they cover quite a bit because we cover North, I mean, um, Kinston, New Bern, and Jacksonville. And from time to time, when anyone needs, we try to be there as much as possible. 
but also they go towards our diabetes initiative. We have a diabetes initiative where we are pouring into as well, as well as St. Jude's Hospital. So with the advertising that we had, it kept us right on track. So next year, we're actually looking at much, much larger numbers. We have went to 1,100 here at uh, the American Legion. And those are just, the only difference is we have people not only traveling and uh, they're getting caught up outside of town where they have a business to where they cannot make it in. But our date is set, so we're looking forward to quite a few more numbers in the ensuing year. Thank we you very much. Your support. Very important. Thank you very much. Okay, next order of business is going to be a staff report from uh, staff and Teresa. I'm going to just let Teresa begin with this and um, to speak of that. We're going to refer to some of the opportunities that you um, have funded, um, and that's available to you on page 25, as you will see there. She's going to bring you up to date on how we've done with the ones that have already um, gone through the process. So we see there's a couple that um, are coming out, actually, of the total fund. Um, some of the people that there's a couple that have declined. Um, and aren't moving forward with their event or not accepting the funding. Um, but the events that we've done so far uh, have done well. Uh, we have shifted a lot of the marketing dollars, have shifted to social media for obvious reasons because that's where people are. But also what we've done is it enables us to, uh, you can afford to go outside of the market a, a lot. It's just more affordable to do it that way. So, uh, for instance, for the charity ball, we, did, we covered the entire state and we covered Virginia and South Carolina with some of their social media. And it showed in, in their ticket sales. So uh, that one was great. The Oktoberfest was great. It was a beautiful weekend for that. We have um, some events coming up. Just to be aware of, the uh, Winterfest is this weekend. Anybody looking for something fun to do with the kids? That's going to be great. And they've done some, some great things to uh, enhance their event this year and have even more for next year. Um, we have in February, first quarter's busy. We have February, we've got a couple of things. Extreme Endurance Challenge, part of the um, Grand, P Grand Prix series that you guys funded. And we have Jazz in the City which is the 17th and 18th at the Marriott again. Um, March is the Bridal Expo, so that's already underway. We've already begun to promote that, and uh, things are looking good, looking up. We've already had, um, just reaching out on social media, we've already got vendors included and some some interest in from the brides, so that, that ought to be great. Then we have uh, March, St. Patty's Engineer Challenge, which is really good, and we've got some other things happening that weekend that I, Glenn is going to cover. And uh, April, Mind, Body, and Soul, the Women's Empowerment, is uh, underway as well as the Art Block, the Marsock, which is, again, part of the Grand, Grand Prix series, and then we'll wrap it up with the Jamboree. So it's busy, busy time. And if we would, we'd just like to pause just for a moment and talk about, um, show you something about Winterfest here, um, that, um, so you get an idea of that.
Teresa did indicate um, they, they have many more slides, um, many, much more snow this year. <coughs> Um, those that might have been deterred last year by having to wait in line so long, they have, they have heard you. Um, if we could, we're just going to go ahead and move right into the strategic initiative, if that's all right with you, Chairman. Um, one of the things that we want to really um, think about was the, was the interaction of our partners here, and uh, obviously the Sports Commission, and Kristen's been a part of this too, but when we had Jam Productions present to us the idea about Terracross, uh, many of us had to find out what it was. Um, and then we've now had nine hours of programming on CBS network, um, the sports network um, that have, the last of which occurred this weekend. Um, and it's really had some um, impact. And they have selected, um, um, they intend to come back in October and do a, a, a competition between the Marines and the Army. They're going to go to Fort Bragg, then they're going to come here and finish things up. And it was a pretty successful thing, and we have a little piece of video we want to show you here that's just a couple minutes on what happened on what was then a very hot and muddy weekend. Yes. <laughs> very muddy. Just a few minutes from historic Marine Base Camp Lejeune, we've set up our base camp in Jacksonville, North Carolina for the second stop the Mystic Terracross Championships and support our troops event. Hi everybody, Kevin Barnett alongside Jim Beaver. Before we talk about the racers, Jim, we need to talk about the course and the conditions. No doubt, Kevin, as if Terracross isn't difficult enough. Normally, we've added 12 inches of rain over the past week and created some difficult conditions for both the course builders and the drivers. If you're looking for something where people can come and get a patriotic feel, can feel like they are giving back to the military and they're in that world, we're it. Being able to give that experience, having the Marines out here helping out at the event, um, it's always great to be able to show them that Jacksonville's more than just a Marine town. Um, there's more to do here, but bringing in people from the outside to say, hey, we appreciate all that you're doing. It's awesome that we can provide um, you know, your drivers and Terracross drivers, the opportunity to be in a military town, um, to interact with the Marines on the course, to get a chance to see them hauling dirt and playing in the mud just as much as everybody else. And it's, you know, we're all in this together to make this event work. And I think the Marines do a great job of being a part of it and knowing that they're just a part of a bigger picture at all times. Since 1941, a special relationship between Jacksonville, North Carolina, and the men and women of Camp Lejeune. Cody Raiders two laps down after his stop. He's back underway. It continues to be the Jason Luberg Show in Jacksonville, North Carolina, a town intertwined with its military roots. Stop number two is the Mystic Terracross Support Our Troops event in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Attached to Camp Lejeune, established in 1941, an opportunity for these young racers to learn more about the history of the Marines. Being out here, it's definitely, it's definitely, you know, eye-opening and crazy when you see these, you know, big statistics. It, you know, broadens your eyes and it's uh, crazy to put it in a perspective like this, but it's also really cool to see the memorial and see all the facts and to see everything that they brought together and then all the pieces of our work they have to show. You know, it hits you, you know, right in the stomach, especially when you're walking through and you look at all the names on the glass and, you know, usually you just see it as a number, but you actually see people's physical names and uh, individual placards. It's definitely eye-opening and it's, you know, it's sad. I really like to, you know, pay respect to people in the military. I'm super glad we'll be able to come out and, you know, put on a show. I know it's always great just for racers or other racers to watch, so I know that they'll enjoy it too as well. Um, I'm super excited to, you know, bring a show and just have a good time racing. 170,000 personnel military related surrounding this area. An area right now that is covered by a track for Terracross. Stop number two, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Kevin Barnett alongside Jim Beaver watching Jason Luberg do what he does. Visit JacksonvilleNC.com is where you want to go to learn more about Stop 2 of Mystic Terracross, the Support Our Troops event. That's your last meeting authorized a sponsorship um, that um, had some benefits to us in, in doing that. And I certainly think that the national exposure that came from that um, duplicated timing, 
they did tell us they'll show these um, hours over again as they as they need time to fill. But obviously, we're getting ready to go into basketball and some other things that'll likely take some clock time away from them. Um, there was an unexpected bill to acquire the permit. While we required Terra Cross to do her thing about uh, making the property there, one thing we did not know was going to have to be the bill for um, getting the permit as it was. We had to hire an engineering firm to help us out. And so we're asking if you would, um, the um, city manager wants this paid from the tourism related funding, and it was 2330, um, and it allowed the dirt to be placed at that site. So um, if you could approve that expenditure um, for the engineering expenses related to Terra Cross Racing um, from the tourism related expenses, we would appreciate that consideration of that. Move that we approve the expenditure of $2,330 for the engineering experiences related to the racing from the tourism related fund. I have a motion. Second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Obviously, um, hot import nights was um, the next thing that was to come. And as you heard about um, the effects of Matthew, um, that just basically rained out um, what hot import nights was to be. And so that one, they, um, they didn't ever launch it because they knew it was going to be, you know, that weekend was going to be just a really crazy weekend. And so, but they have committed for March 11th. Um, of 2017, and we have great um, hopes um, that they'll that that'll be a very successful event. We've seen lots of wonderful things that have come of that, as it was. We'll give you the dates as soon as we have them for Terracross. They've given us a couple of dates in October, and we've cleared um, them and told them, much like what they were talking about with the Arabian Temple Charity Ball, having Oktoberfest going on at the same time was a benefit. And we've got to just now connect some of those uh, pieces together to get more of them downtown to that event as it was. Now, when, I'm sorry, Glenn, when you say October, in the minutes it says 18. Are we talking 17 or 18? That would be March 11, 2017. Yeah, I know on that, but the Terracross. We're back to the Terracross. The Terracross will be, we're hoping, next October also. 17. Yes, sir. Okay. So the track remains as... It's as there. As it, well, it's a lot <laughs> buddier. <laughs> Some of us lost shoes out there that we have not replaced yet. You know? We don't see a bill for that. No, you don't. It's a donation. It was, a um, it was quite an, it was, it was an experience to see that as it was. It really was an experience. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, I was there from day one from the time. I mean, the committee did a wonderful job. My grandson had done three tours in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. He raced the last heroes race uh, of the day, of the day uh, over there, and rolled the vehicle <laughs> on the last turn. He had, that, he had that service member in front of him in his sights. I mean, he was closing on him, come in the last turn, and rolled that vehicle about five times. I mean, he got out, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> 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 It was absolutely awesome. Thank you. There's some great video that we did not show you, and I, I tell you folks, uh, you know, you can go to YouTube now and still see all of it. It's terracross.com, and um, you can see all those things up there, which will play for some time, too, as it was. Well, with your permission, I'll go on to the Strategic Initiative Fund, which, as you mentioned, that's helped out with the Oktoberfest and getting that beer for them. Uh, they just didn't have enough time to launch it for this year, but as you heard, the enthusiasm for their 10th year is really going on. Oh, absolutely. The livability, that's that journal communications that we did with the story, it's actually launched, but it has not fully launched, and no publicity has occurred to it. But should you want to see it, it's um, livability.com slash jacksonville, slash nc.jacksonville is a way to get to it without going through their main deal. And so consequently, it's, it's, there's a number of stories that will be generated. If you'll remember, there's only 20. And they will talk about annual events, best places to eat, six things for the families to do, you know, things to do when you're here, what to expect even from a military move to try to get people who might come in here. And um, these will be, as time happens, they'll push over the next couple of months these out to social media. And then there'll be campaigns that'll be made, and this will drive people back in to visit Jacksonville NC. It'll also push our brand and things out there as it was. And as you recall, they wanted us to agree to a three-year contract. You all have only appropriated for a one year right now, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it does take time for these to go because 
people will go to livability to find out what are the best cities for X or Y as it was. On reunion development, I'm not going to steal any Christian um, um, theory, um, um, storm here as it was, but the long story made short is, is that that's still under development and still going under, and, and Ashley will talk about the sports development um, in there, and um, on the docents program, we now have them moving. Uh, they're going to get past Christmas, and they have started things for the docent program. We wanted the docent pro program in place before we um, work further on the tours because we want to build from that group of people who will have an investment into the city tourism to talk to them. The on-base tours, we're on hold for that right now because we want to get the Lejeune Memorial Gardens tour going as it was. And so we're going to work with our partners at Vietnam and the Museum of the Marine and others to help with that part of the process um, to build these tours of the gardens as it was. Now, that's, um, that, that stops that part, and we're here to answer any questions that you might have about that, or we'll just keep on going. Thank you. Any questions? Anybody? Go ahead. Okay. Well, under other staff work, one of the things we wanted to talk to you about was um, an, a validation, empirical, and strategic review. Uh, we were encouraged um, to look at an evaluation of some of our current efforts um, that we could use to measure success. Um, if you agree to this, um, we would bring you back um, some proposals um, that you could use to, to look at this. This would give us, hopefully, empirical data. Remember, we've had this conversation from some groups about, why don't you advertise to get more people to come and visit here, and you just do more institutional advertising. We've said, well, we have to do it the world over, because that's where Marines come from. Um, subsequent to that, uh, we've been encouraged to consider the, some of these firms that could do a more intensive research um, that are affiliated with some of the tourism lobbies um, that could help um, advance that is that we really don't know where these people are coming from and that they can help us find that and help provide a strategy. If our strategy doesn't match, we'll bring it back to you and say we need to make this change. If not, we'll keep on marching the way we are there. So what we're asking for now is um, um, permission to go ahead and, and seek out options and bring them back to you at a future meeting. Any make a motion? Please, a move to authorize the staff to investigate options for research measurement and strategic review and appropriate, to bring appropriate options to the authority for consideration. And there will be no expenditure until we approve No funds will be necessary okay. Thank for you. the action. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay, the second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That's all for us. Thank you very much. On the Visit NC projects, um, we've got several of them that are underway. The video production, as you know, um, we've been airing that. It's up on YouTube. It's YouTube. It's getting even more hits. It's on the um, um, Visit NC website. Um, it's, it's working out there, and we'll be doing more push to get that video out, telling the story that you've heard before. The History.net is active. Our partners with the Museum of the Marine, we're really hoping that they can help us and that they can benefit from this um, partnership that we have with them, that they can provide us with some more material. The Rhythm One Influencer, this looks for blogs. As mentioned, one of our strategies is to try to find people who have um, children who are in, seems strange to say that, but have uh, you know, children who are in the Marines and such that might come to visit here. So we want to hit those blogs back with, um, you know, with information. The livability will give us a third party that we can push stories to them with. And so that's why we wanted to wait till February till livability gets up so we can push live the, that, those stories out to those blogs and that can give us some more credences. Yeah, we ought to go visit um, Johnny at Camp Lejeune and see where we are. <clears throat> Social media spotlights. Um, we have now um, got some dates in March of 2017. We're looking at the 13th through the 15th. Um, some of those times in there. Um, when the North Carolina, with the um, advertising agency for the state would come in and they would actually um, take down all sorts of social media activities and then push them out in a site-wide takeover that would be just about Jacksonville and Onslow County as it was. And obviously we'll be partnering with our friends here to my right. And the enhanced partner listing, we didn't quite understand that when we um, engaged in that. And so um, we, we want to have a conversation with the with um, Christian and Laurent about how uh, we might be able to benefit from that together. Um, it's basically, um, it's, it's um, site-based um, 
uh, listing, and um, we're going to, we don't, we're not ready to generate visitors to Jacksonville City Hall, so we're going to want to talk with them about some options that might be available there. And then on the website co-op, I must tell you, Susan Dozer has done a remarkable job with us about giving us some hints about how a tourism site should be constructed far different from a government website, and uh, we're listening carefully. And um, we have been um, reacting to her advice and counsel, and that's been a, a lot of good there. Um, we, we also bought a few hours of some other people who can help us um, engage some special programming that might be needed to help us with that part of it. So that's how that goes. I do want to talk about key placements, and I have for you, um, we have a handout here. I hit it for myself here. And so if um, you take one, pass one down, and then pass it past everyone. Uh, we're in uh, the USA Today travel document. Uh, we mentioned to you it's about a year and a half ago, but it takes that long for everything to process through. Uh, and we're on page 72 in there. And again, this was one through the strategic initiative and through the, um, uh, our discussions with strategic people about how to do things. This one talks about our memorials. 82,102 <coughs> names out there in the memorials. You know, come visit and do this. Um, you know, this isn't unique, but it, it fits to Jacksonville and Onslow County precisely. Uh, this is the page that it's on, and um, obviously um, there's an opportunity to now advertise in the, um, the next um, um, spring event activity. Um, for the same amount of money, we'd get a half page, and um, we're, we, we have the budget to do that from where you've already provided us, but we'd love to hear... Um, feedback from you. This is, this is a, a document that's sold, uh, but it's distributed with USA Today, um, and uh, it, you'll see in there, there's several places in North Carolina that advertise and that um, you can get editorial content um, after you associate with them for a while. So we'd love to have any feedback that you might have on that, or what are your thoughts there? Any comments? I think it's good work. Okay. All right. Uh, um, I, have, I have one thing for you. Are we working on the North Carolina League of Municipalities video? I know that. Did Richard get with you on that? I'm not completely aware of what that is right now. We'll get together. After. Okay. <laughs> the League of Municipalities has come up with a new program that basically you get to highlight your community, and they're building a database of communities within North Carolina where people go and their stars on the map basically identifying your community and, and it's a free program so we want to make sure that we create we have enough that, video to do that, that media media to do that okay. <laughs> go ahead we go have on. good stuff there okay well the other thing about branding implementation um we have ordered um we have uh, license plates and um and bags and um so um we'll have some some bags available, so um, when we can do that. Now, as mentioned, we're still going to support the goodie bags that we do with the with the um, with Onslow Tourism, and um, we hope that um, we can do that for some time to come. But these guests go for something might be uh, might give them out at Mind Body Soul. You don't know, you know, type of activity as it was there too. Now, um, on wayfinding, um, the Mayor Pro Tem was at the session, obviously, where we presented to the City Council. Um, you know, some um, <laughs> concepts to them about that you had previously seen, and um, we just want to bring, bring you up to speed on this matter. We talked about we now do have the full design intent document um, that basically um, takes our program. You set aside $450,000 for us to implement the program, and one of the things that got the city interested was about the um, gateways. And, of course, this was, um, you know, the proposal that had been put forth at this time. On December 6th, the city council will consider um, whether they wish to have these implemented as such there. And so um, I'm just showing you what we showed them. Um, we do break out the words caring community, and we use simplified versions of our seal and the, and the logo for um, Jacksonville tourism as it was. Um, we have the design documents, um, you know, that shows the dimensions and the construction techniques and even what you construct the box out of and doing things like that as was how the fabrication and channel letters would um, work on that. This is the vertical of that where you use it for small space. Um, as you can see, this one basically would fit in a space about 12 feet wide compared to the other one that's going to take about 25 to 30 feet um, for that space as it was. And, of course, one thing that we're very excited about is the consideration of doing this sign with um, changeable um, messaging on it at the intersection of um, 
of um, North Gateway and um, <laughs> Western Boulevard. We think that would be a, a great way to get the word out and to also um, show where the entrance is to Jacksonville Commons, as it was. And this was a design they put forth. What we discovered was is that um, 24 feet is not going to be high enough. You're going to need a, something much higher um, for out there on Western Boulevard. So that's why we didn't have them finish that design, because we'll work um, on that from otherwise. The document does show where all the signs will go. It's got all the signage that you'd put to show how to get to the Memorial Gardens, how you'd get to the courthouse, how to do things of which visitors might want to find um, while they're here. And you can see that most of the signs are concentrated in the downtown area, but there's some that are out there um, in the other areas. This is where the sign would go out on Gum Branch, and that white on yellow doesn't show up very well there. But um, it does show the locations about how that would be. This is on the entrance off Gum Branch Road um, that's out there. Um, this is from 17 North um, as, this, as, as you come in there, uh, where a narrow sign would likely be the best option there from the Freedom Way um, um, entrance, um, as it was. And, of course, the sign that um, many people euphemistically call the Exxon entrance. Um, that's out there as it was. And of course, this one we're very happy with, and that would be at the entrance to the commons at the intersection of Western and Gateway North as it was. So we just wanted to bring you up with that um, because since we have addressed the council and um, done that as such there um, to go. The last thing I want to mention to you is the state's tourism conference. Um, it's coming up March 19th to 21st. Um, last year, um, uh, Ms. Beecham and I attended, and um, this year it's in Greenville. Um, and if any of y'all wish to attend, um, you know, we can register and get you registered there. Um, it's a, usually a three-day event. Um, I think that um, we brought back a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's where we, uh, with the help of Lorette, she was also there. We, we found Susan Dozer and uh, made some of those connections as it was. So um, we'll be going back. I intend to take some of the media staff on one day um, so they can um, see some of the media presentations and uh, see how it is different um, advancing a community for visitation versus that the other. So March 19th to 21st in Greenville, if you wish to go, um, let us know. Okay. That's Great. all I have, sir. Thank you very much. Any questions? No questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Brian. Good report. Uh, a lot going on. Uh, this wayfinding signage is is moving forward as a priority. Uh, once we move it through council, we you know we would like to to keep this process moving. Is the budget uh, of 450 going to be well? Sufficient? It's going to actually we're going to start in phases. I think the 450 may include some of the entrance signs that will be a priority, and then the commons sign. Glenn, correct me if I'm right. Previously, uh, y'all were most interested in the uh, uh, the. Uh, the message sign, and then we were going to look at entrance signs and then the other one. This isn't going to do everything that's in the book. No, it's not, but no. our plans are to move forward with the full sign package. So as we get the blessing on the layouts from the council, then we can sort of set our plan because wayfinding is, is very important for us, and that's sort of our next phase. Of, of getting things done here. We need to replace all our entrance signs. We need to do the common sign. And then we need to move right into the wayfinding. Uh, so you so is that the way the priority is going to be set up? Or who's, who's you got folks to set tell the priority? Them. Well, the, the council is interested, obviously, in the entrance signs. Yes. You folks were most interested in the message sign. And so we're going to try to see if we can't keep those two tracks moving. Okay. Yeah. But you folks tell us what you want us to do. Anything entrance else? sign being the one for the commons? All of them. The commons is the message sign. Yeah, that's, that's the message, message sign. sign. Entrance where does sign. That, where does that fall in the priority list for everybody? First well, it's first for you all, it's second from them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glenn, the entrance that you're talking about is entrance to our larger areas or the entrance to the city? Or the entrance to the city, where there are currently entrance signs now. So if you see one now, this would be replacing it. And I think there, we're also going to be engaging in conversation as to the placement. Am I correct in saying that we're going to look at uh -huh. where they're placed now and if there's... We can. I think, not necessarily us, but I think Richard is, yeah. is looking at that as well. So yeah. the idea is we need to get our gateway signs. It's a council priority, but I think they're both priorities, and I think we can move them both forward with the budget that we have. So I don't, I don't see it as an issue. 
What we need is, you know, the blessing on the layouts and, and the strategic plan for it. If so, I may, just, just a question. How many of the entrance signs, I mean, the only one that I ever see is the one on Old Bridge Street and... Uh, and Exxon. Yeah, the Exxon sign. <laughs> how, many other, how many other entry signs there's, are there? There's, well, there's one, one on Piney Green coming in from uh, Swansboro. There's one just past, right by Hunter's Creek. Actually, almost uh, at the Hunter's Creek entrance. Okay. There's one on Gum Branch Road. There's one at 17, at, um, 17, 17 north. north, and then the Exxon. Okay. Glenn, what am I missing? You got them. I think I got them. I, right. I think that's it. The only reason I brought that up is that unless you mention them, you they really don't stand out. Yeah. I mean, right. you know, uh, you kind of have to really think about where they're at. Um, and we want to make sure that the new signs uh, say... Uh, a lot more about our community, mm. you know, and that they're prominent and that they're seen and that they're visible. And so that's sort of the goal. Uh, you know, 17 South is a good example of, of no, there's really not a sign of 17 South coming into town from 17. And same thing for 258. Yeah. Coming from Stenson. Well, the thought there was is that you get to it because you remember when the city it's limits used to be there at um, at Old Bridge and 17. We need something on 17 South, mm -hmm. I think. That's why we're going to look at the placement and try to figure out, you know, how we've grown and where the new uh, points should be, if any changes at all or additions. So I guess we can determine that as we move along. But um, but from the sports commission's priority, obviously the the entrance signs to the commons, where there's a great deal of activity, and um, you know the amount of traffic that travels on Western, um, it's a great opportunity to to let everyone know what's going on all the time. So it would be a very productive sign. It was actually in the original budget for the commons. So what happened? Money. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing that happens with everything. Huh? <laughs> Always a factor. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, thank you. Ashley? Yeah. Hi. Um, so <laughs> uh, we were talking about everything that was happening kind of pre- Good job on the video. Oh, thanks. They spelled my name wrong, but it's all right. <laughs> it's my husband's name. I guess I could finally claim it. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so Hurricane Matthew also, while it took out Hot Import Nights, uh, we were the final destination for Cycle in C. Um, Kristen and Lorette were out there along with our staff, um, and Susan and Melody and Warren and the whole entire city, Parks and Rec, were out there helping out, um, making sure that cyclists that came through were still taken care of. Um, we, again, we were the final destination. They were not able to cross the bridge to get over to Atlantic Beach for safety concerns. Um, so it was nice to have them in. Uh, they frequented Ducks and Carolina Ale House heavily, um, <laughs> very heavily. We took a lot of shuttles. At one point, we were the shuttle drivers. Um, they're a great group. They come from all over. We had a guy who RV'd from Texas. That was his nickname, Texas, and he bought $1,200 worth of seafood and had it wow. shipped and brought over to the Commons. <laughs> um, so thank you to the Commons staff for keeping it cold for him so that he could get it back to Asheville. Um, and into that area. So um, really great events. They're very appreciative of everything we did, um, so much so that they're actually looking at not coming back to Jacksonville, but trying to figure out is there another destination within Onslow County um, that they can actually make the final stop because they did, were so impressed with everything that we did. Um, Theo talked about Meeting Max, so it is live now. We actually opened it up with a non-sporting event. Um, we opened it up with Odyssey of the Minds. So we're working with our hoteliers right now and making sure that everybody has contracts in, feeling comfortable. I know that Melody um, and Julie sat in on the training and got a chance to hear through a lot of that stuff. So um, we are, again, just working through that process, making sure the hoteliers know what they're doing, um, answering any questions for you guys that you may have. I know occupancy tax was a huge one on getting taxed on certain areas. So um, we're waiting for Kylie to get over um, being sick from vacation. So she'll be in and we'll get a chance <laughs> to meet back up. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about meeting Max. And like I said, obviously the mines and non-sporting events. So this will be a great test market for us. 
Uh, going into the rest of kind of the fiscal year, um, we are crazy with sporting events. We, particularly with the Sports Commission, though, on our owned and operated, have six events in five months, um, starting in February. So that will be the Matt Helms Memorial Shootout in February and the Quick Stick Invitational, which is a lacrosse tournament. Um, we've actually already signed up teams out of the Raleigh market, so we're really, really excited about that event and kind of being on the forefront of it all. As we talked about, Hot Import Nights is coming in in March. Um, the great thing, while we were sad to see it moved, it was actually a blessing in disguise. They got the opportunity to launch and put out the name that it was coming to Jacksonville at SEMA in Vegas, which is a massive, massive car show, parts, and people from that industry. Um, so the buzz that we got off of that event alone was worth Hurricane Matthew coming in and screwing it up. Um, <laughs> We also have boxing, we have our Hall of Fame event, we also have a shooting event um, kind of to round out the rest of the fiscal year and then we'll launch right back into Football Jamboree and the next rounds of everything. Um, I also want to talk about the East Coast Invitational. So this is an event that Wells Gulledge has put on out of the Kinston market. Um, they've been with us for 15 years now. He's going to have 24 boys teams and then he's doing the expansion. He'll have eight girls teams. So he has the pick of the litter. He's going in June. Um, so we'll get to double dip on the economic impact for the whole entire year. But the good thing about this is because he's only inviting eight teams into um, on the girls' side of the event, he really gets the opportunity to bring in, you know, a Southern Durham, um, a Chapel Hill, Northside, Jacksonville. They're strong, but really kind of reaching across the state um, as it'll be the first time this event's ever held for them on the girls' side. The staff has been working on um, a special event. Um, that we're hoping we're going to be able to land as kind of an exploratory. Um, so we've been reaching out and talking with Spartan Series. Um, we're not capable yet of hosting an actual race, but there's a workout that goes along with it. And this is a chance for people that are participating in Spartan races to put in, um, get in a workout, doing the burpees, doing all the lunges, a lot of the same components they would see on race day, but with Spartan staff. Um, they get free t-shirts, it's a chance for them to come in and ask a lot of questions. Um, just because Fayetteville is hosting, we're actually right in that market. It's our hope that once they're here, we can then turn around and start showing them potential properties that we can host an event on. Um, so again, just another way of recruiting the business. It's an absolutely free event for us to host, but because we would be the only one on the eastern side of the state, we can pull from Raleigh, Fayetteville, um, Greenville, northern part of South Carolina. Um, they draw really, really well. Anywhere from 300 to up to 1,200 people come in for those events. And then our last one that um, I've touched on before, but we've kind of been moving and taking those steps, um, is we are taking over the New River Palooza weekend. We have not figured out a name for the event um, for the Water-Based Festival. We are still in those stages. Um, but we have talked with the chamber. They're going to take on the food side of the house. Um, we want to host a taste of the water, um, encouraging restaurants and food trucks to showcase some type of seafood option, um, just things that you would find if you were in the community often enough or if you were to go out fishing. Here's kind of ways to prepare and what, they're gonna, what you're going to see. Um, so they've agreed to that. We've been working with Teresa on the concert portion of that and working with Alpha Media and seeing who we can draw in. Uh, for that event and then on our side we've been working on a stand-up paddleboard event researching what our options are pulling other budgets from actually across the nation we've been in talks with a group out of Washington um, to get a lot of their information and then Danny Sabraco um, on hosting, hosting a fishing tournament um, in conjunction and having it be a part of a series um, potentially working with the Rotary group on that event um, and then we were approached by the city Parks and Rec about um, they're trying to put together a kayathlon, so putting that maybe on that Sunday, we're going to clear out Riverwalk so it'll be open for the cycling and the running portion, um, and then they can use the waterways for the kayathlon or for the kayaking portion. So we're really excited. Um, it's a lot, <laughs> as Teresa <laughs> keeps lot. looking at me. There's a lot going on, um, but the excitement over it has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I know it's something different for our staff, and it's been nice to see them researching other things that can be going on instead of worrying about our traditional Olympic sports. That's great. That's what Good we've been report. up to. Good report. Any questions mm -hmm. on the activities? Feel free. Ask Thank you lots. very much. <laughs> no Thank you for all you do. Kristen? 
Hello. How are you? Good. That's good. Um, Close out October with our photo shoot. We had a photographer who is pretty well known throughout um, at least the East Coast. He actually shoots stuff for Visit Delaware as a statewide and everything. And he came down and for two days we went around and captured great photography of um, places that have not really gotten to go and be focused. We went out to Huffman Vineyard. Um, Lance Ledoux took us out on his yacht. So we got some wonderful water shots as well as being able to expose or uh, get good pictures of letting people see that you can actually go out on his yacht. That he'll take you out. It is like a tour that we have here. Um, as well as uh, some beach shots. We went out to Hammocks Beach. Got some of the campsites out there. Um, got to show off a lot. I'm very excited. The pictures came back. Um, they had promised us 30. We got 175. Oh, good. Uh, so it was very, very, very wonderful. And we got some people in them, some pictures in them. We actually had, um, were able to use some children in some of the shots. So that's usually very hard to get. But we were able to get one that was a lot, gave us consent to shoot her. And she's adorable. So um, Mike's Farm got to benefit from being able to have that. Um, but it was nice because we were able to get a lot of their fall stuff. But we were able to also sort of get it to where we hid the pumpkins and stuff so that we can use that year-round. Um, now that we have that photo shoot, we can start moving forward and really start the design and the implementation of our visitor guide and any of the ads and stuff that will come along with that. Um, so I'm very, very excited to be able to do that. It has slowed down a little bit lately, and so we can really focus hardcore on that. Um, the mention the engaged Onslow earlier, we it's been pedaled to the floor on this one. Um, the rehearsal dinner that's going to be happening the Friday night before is coming along wonderful. Um, we've basically every restaurant we've approached has said they would love to be a part of it. Um, we've almost getting to the point where we're going to have to like tell people, okay, maybe next year. Um, I think they're going to be able to have 10 to 15 girls per limo to go and we're going to have two different tours and then the venue tour that will be the next day following the expo will actually be able to have three different tours so that we can take a one out towards Richlands, one out towards North Topsail and then one towards Swansboro and all of them will include a Jacksonville venue as well. Uh, registration is open for vendors and brides. They have opened it, as Teresa mentioned. So very exciting. I think um, Holly's been wonderful in putting it together, and um, I think this is going to be something that only grows to become regional. I know that she's had new vendors that I think eight of them are new so far, and it hasn't really been a hard push yet. So, um, And then, of course, with the military union prep, uh, finally got in touch with um, a lady who is with your military union connection. That is the main military conference that you go to to meet meeting planners. Um, finally got to talk to her. She, uh, we're just now trying to work out dates that go along with her schedule. She's busy. They do eight conferences a year all throughout the U.S. So trying to work it in to where we can talk to her either through Skype or be able to bring her into Jacksonville and sit down and be able to make those plans. Um, if anything, they are having a conference in February in Myrtle Beach. So that's an easy destination for us. Um, if we are not able to get her in here, I'm more than happy that Myself or Holly will be able to make our way down there and get to get in front of her and get to talk to her and start making those plans. Um, let's see, upcoming conferences. He mentioned the visit NC 365 conference, as well as I'll be going to Travel South Domestic Showcase, which is going to be in March. The nice thing about this one is you get in front of group tour operators as well as journalists. So it's a great one. So I'm more than happy working together and taking stuff and be able to take and help pitch the whole area and bring in these uh, journalists and come in. Um, and then, of course, the PGA Tour. I'm not sure if y'all have heard about it, the Wells Fargo Championship that will be in Wilmington in next May, May of 2017. Um, a lot of the tours and partners throughout the eastern, southern coast of North Carolina have come together, and we're actually going to host a media reception. Um, they're looking, they have over 200 journalists that will be coming in. These are big journalists. I mean, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, all your big, big sports magazines. And we're going to be hosting that media reception. It will be the Wednesday before, so right after the Pro-Am, um, at a restaurant. Oh, man, what is it? It's right near the golf course. It's on the water. Plans are getting worked out. Um, to Each person has been asked to put in, each, I guess, tourism entity has been asked to put in 2500 to be a participant and what you'll get with it is that helps cover the cost of the media reception as well as um, you'll be able to put stuff in a great goodie bag that we're going to be able to give to all of them plus you as well as one person can come and it's your way of being able to pitch to all these journalists you get them in this reception and it's our turn to kind of sell our area as well as we're going to have a booth that's going to be there the whole time and we're going to go in uh, somebody from the northern part of the so basically above Jacksonville and then somebody from the southern part below Jacksonville two people at a time will be working so that we get both regions covered um, so that is something and that's going to be coming down the pipe and that's working along wow. 
Wow. They're busy too. Yes, sir. <laughs> Kiss some. Um, go ahead. I will say, um, if you guys have the opportunity and have it in your budget to participate in the media reception um, for the golf course, it is a phenomenal way to get your name out. Mm -hmm. um, when I worked with the Buick Championship I, as an intern, this is one of the events that I helped put on um, with the staff. And the they're so much more willing to listen to you because you've taken care of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like any hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, but the great thing about it is, is they're a captive audience and they're willing and they want to hear more about the region that they're in. So yes, you're talking to ESPN, yes, you're talking to Sports Illustrated or the Golf Magazine or the Golf Channel. Um, normally these guys are, you know, getting hit by everybody, mm -hmm. but in this instance, they are looking to you to provide them information. So again, if you guys have the opportunity, this is a phenomenal one to take advantage of and one that probably won't be coming our way mm -hmm. again, since that one golf course in Charlotte is under construction. So, well, and they came to this area mainly for two reasons, the water and the military. So, um, it's nice that we, we are the military, so be able to provide that part. Now, how would we partner if we decided to do that? Would we have one booth for Jacksonville and Onslow County, or would we have two booths? How Have there been any it's, discussions about that? So the booth, you're not necessarily going to have a booth dedicated for Onslow County or Jacksonville. It's a booth that all the tourism partners are manning, and we're going to have all the materials for everybody who's a part of it. There's about 10 of us oh, okay. that will be a part of it. And it's just we'll have representatives who will take different time slots to be able to sit there and... Um, you know, we're trying to promote the whole area and we'll have the materials for everything so it's not owned in on one person. Region. Whereas at the reception, when you're talking to somebody, please go for it. It can be Jackson all the way. That's the whole well, point. Well, no, of the I was just curious on how the setup would yes, be sir. if we decided to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Glenn, you had a. Yes, um, this, this, um, this goes back to staffing and how we get things done. And we think this is a very worthy thing. We just haven't worked out some of those logistics. We have such a great partnership here. But. Um, um, I, I think we should do this. I think it's, 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 I mean, it's a chance to tell our story. Well, I think we should, too. That's why I was asking the questions. I, you know, I think you need to just bring us some information and, you know, let's get it on the table. Well, would you like to let's go ahead and reserve a spot, and then we'll work out the details as to how we'll staff that thing at, a, at another time? In other words, you want a $2,500 commitment now? Well, it, we, want to, we don't want to lose our space, is what we're saying here. <laughs> She's already got it. She has a space. She it gets one person space. in. So you're asking to add another space. And that would be another person okay. that gets to go pitch things. And who would that be? Don't know exactly yet, but um, you know, I'd we like can to work that out. I mean, we, could, we can budget the, the money well, we don't if you'd like, money. but... You need a motion? Need, <laughs> well, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe, yes, yes, if you're going to spend money, Gail would like you to make a motion. Uh, she's going to gonna kill me. I didn't bring oh, this Gail. up, Miss Gail. No, this was like, yeah. Yeah. I make a motion that we set aside. I don't. I don't well, hold on. I, I wouldn't do it. We, we, we can, we can do this at your next meeting yeah. if you'd like. Yeah. It's in May. But, Let's um, give the details uh, first. And we'll actually be having a meeting a good idea. Thursday. The uh, All the tourism partners will be getting together Thursday. Okay. Okay. For lunch, so yeah. we'll be able to get lunch. Sure, we didn't pay our twenty five hundred, so we can't go to that. Right, that's what I now that twenty five hundred <laughs> is that for the ten folks that are getting together, the region that's getting together. Each one has to pay twenty five hundred. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. You're paying for the food and liquor. We twenty five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. It's one of these things where but we want to do it right. The opportunity. <laughs> we do well, this on the state drill. level. <laughs> you get to drill. Well, it's already being represented by her. Right. Yeah. But each we, region has yeah. We're interested. So we're we need interested. to know yeah. a little bit more. Anyways, so more info, please. Absolutely. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Kristen, is that all? Yes, sir, that is it. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's go over collections real quick. Well, we have good news to report. Um, the, um, we are up 11% over the same period a year ago. I like that. Um, so that is, um, that is much better news than what we've been telling you all these other times, I'll tell you that. You'll notice there's a new category in your document and on the screen called online. Um, these are where the Airbnbs and um, others are, are paying into this, um, this activity here. And so that is basically included also in your bottom line there. They're paying directly into that point as it was. Um, so if you want to look at the same time period for two years, now you remember this county trend is the county trend from 2011 
in 2010, the highest recorded occupancy tax we have had. And we are just one hundredths of a percent less than what that was for the same period. So we'll take the credit for that? <laughs> <laughs> you should. You should take the credit. Um, anyway, if you look in here, the dark blue is obviously this year, the FY17. And you can see that it's matching the numbers of, um, you know, the, the, from FY13, 15, not as good as 11, 12, but, um, you know, it's, it's right there at it and, um, you know, within a very close distance. So this is, um, this is pretty good now. Obviously, we know this did not include, um, um, you know, all of October with the, these are October collections are for events for overnight stays in September. So November collections might show a bit of a dip in, um, you know, what happened after Matthew or whether people came here to stay to outlast Matthew, you know. Power companies had to house them somewhere. They, they were certainly, they seemed evident in this, in this community <laughs> during that period of time. So, you know, that's Any where that question? is. Good news. Keep it coming. Yep. <laughs> Very good news. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Um, Future report and activities. You guys uh, want to see anything come forward that you haven't seen? No? Okay. So you will get us more information on the um, that other matter. We'll take that. Any staff comments? No further comments, sir. Okay. Directors? Glad to be back. Good to have you back. Good to have you back. Uh, the only comment I'd have, Mr. Chairman, is that both um, groups that gave reports today did an excellent they job. They did a great we job. We have harped on this since day one. This is the kind of feedback that we want. Um, you know, I think it's the kind of feedback we need to take into consideration when we start allocating funds, to be honest with you. Thank you. And I, uh, I want to echo that. Uh, the uh, Sonic Lodge. They, they have a lodge up in Kenston. If you heard what he said, it's Newburn, Jacksonville, yeah. and Kenston. Mm -hmm. Because of the storm, they couldn't make it. The, the people up in that lodge couldn't make it down, not all of them. Could you imagine? Mm -hmm. uh, as, as was stated, he said it may have been 300, maybe 400 more. So I'm, I'm you know, very excited about uh, uh, the Masonic Lodge being on board, uh, I think. Uh, and I like really the idea of, from the eighteen thousand at least this year that we allocated to. I like the ideas that are coming on the table about creating tours and and you know the the memorials and the great education that Sergeant Major gave to those young men and women that came for Terror Cross. I mean that's that's huge, and we need to do more of that collaborative effort that we can showcase um, what we do have and what is unique about our community. So we do have some unique features here that are not found just anywhere, and I, and, uh, I think that's important. And like so good to, job on that. If, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'd like to give a personal <clears throat> comment about something that happened this week that is kind of what we've been talking about. I, I had the opportunity to be in New York for Thanksgiving with my grandkids, two of them, and they wanted to go by, of course, Ground Zero, which we did. And um, they are 12 and 15. And when I told them that we had a piece of uh, New York in our memorial gardens, they were absolutely flabbergasted. Uh, didn't realize that there were other communities that had items from Ground Zero. And, um, of course, then I'm thinking to myself, well, I thought I took you over there and showed it to you. Maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make here is we have a unique part of history sitting over here that we just don't publicize enough. Uh, not only the gardens themselves, but just that, that one piece right there that a lot of people just don't understand. They didn't, they didn't give that to every community. No. You know, we were very, very fortunate. Uh, and it was a result of, you know, the, Operation Desert Storm alone. Alone. and that sort of thing. But just having that, just having that on site uh, is just a, a tremendous uh, arrow pointed at, at Jacksonville. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing better. We're moving forward with it. But thank you. Any other comments, directors? Okay. Um, if there is nothing else, 
Yes, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> wow, that was everybody.